Welcome. This is Documentation Office Hours, the 4th of November, 2022, Asia Office Hours. Topics on the agenda that I've got, action items, Jenkins Elections, DevOps World, Weekly Release, Next LTS, Hacktoberfest, and Hacktoberfest Highlights. Any other items you want to put on the agenda? No, nope, go for it. Okay, all right. So let's let's take those then. So first, action items. I unfortunately have nothing to report other than I've made no progress. There is, however, a monthly Jenkins newsletter and encourage everybody to read it. It comes out naturally once a month as a blog post. Um, it comes with feedback and comments from the special interest groups from various other places, highlighting the results from that month. So special thanks to Alyssa Tong for creating that. I was gonna ask who was doing that and then I saw it at the bottom, yay. Yeah, so Alyssa is doing it with help from Bruno Verashton. And so Bruno does the technical work to create the pull request and Alyssa gathers the content. If you'd like to submit content, you're welcome to do so. She's preparing the October edition now, and we'll, she's going to switch her preparation technique in the future to use um, community.jenkins.io instead of using a simple Google Doc. So look forward to that. Any questions on the action items? Um, are you doing your class? It says many. I talked for Orlando. Are you guys going to do your class still or your workshop? We, we are not. So that's, that's a good one. When we get to DevOps world, I'll share what we've got there and we can talk through it. Sorry, I'll shut up. Okay, go. Uh, no, it. it's good. Good point. So Jenkins elections was the next topic. And there it's that each of you needs to be sure that you are registered. And if you would like to nominate someone for one of the roles, either as a member of the board or as a one of the officers, you should submit your nomination. So voter registration, you go here, community.jenkins.io, and you click the button that if you haven't already registered, will say join here in the top right hand corner. So let's let's look and see. So Diraj has has registered. Yes. But Meg, Love you have Meg. not. I have and not. I will Chris, I, I don't think you've registered. I will both do that today. Excellent. You're both absolutely great contributors and certainly worth worthwhile having your vote included. Okay. All right. So so there is also an ongoing thread there that talks about how the process works, etc. So if you if you feel like, hey, I would like to nominate someone as an officer or as and you can also nominate yourself or as a board member, by all means, go ahead and do it. Anybody we know who's interested in any of these positions? Uh, so Kevin, I've nominated Kevin Martins as docs officer and I've nominated Alyssa Tong as events officer and Damien DePortal as infrastructure officer. Ooh, good uh, choices. I've got some can a candidate for bo the board Basil Crow, but he's a CloudBees employee, and so we're having discussions right now about are we allowed to have three people affiliated with CloudBees on the board? Mm. Because Kosuke is still officially on the board, even though he's not doing anything on the board, uh, and I'm on the board, and the, the past rules were always that Kosuke is being an advisor to CloudBees meant he was affiliated with CloudBees. Mm. So discussions are ongoing. Right. Really? And what about you, Mark? Are you not participating? Oh, oh, I'm I'm definitely participating. I'll continue. I I intend to continue on the board, but I would prefer that Kevin Martin's take my role as docs officer, so that mm -hmm. I can focus on the board and on the maintenance that I do, and being a docs contributor, less than a doc than the docs officer. Does that mean he would take over this meeting? No, no. I'll I'll keep doing this meeting. Oh, okay. Same Does question. he have to come to this meeting? Uh, I don't think so. He runs Docs Office Hours Europe, and he does that already. He's been doing that for months. 
Okay. So we'll just we'll just have him do office hours Europe and I do office hours Asia. Hmm. And is he in same time zone as you? No, oh, no, no. He's in the U.S. East Coast, so he's in in the Boston area. So he's what is that, Meg? Two hours earlier than me? Yeah, three hours earlier than me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. And people only need one nominee to be nominated, or one. Oh, no, more nominees are certainly welcome. I'm sorry. I mean, but but it's the second nomination. Oh no no it yeah a single single nomination is enough to bring the person up for consideration to the board. Good. But if if for instance any of you say hey I'd like to be the docs officer, you could certainly nominate yourself and say I'm I'm interested in that and then then the election will work it out. Yeah, no no. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else on elections? Okay, then let's take DevOps World as the next topic. So with, with Hurricane Ian, DevOps World face-to-face -face was canceled. Uh, it had the terrible experience of stranding a number of my colleagues in Orlando right in the middle of it so they couldn't get back to Europe. Uh, not a great experience for them. <laughs> All sorts of challenges. Uh, it's going Let to be held. tell their grandchildren they don't have hurricanes in Brussels. So exactly, you—that's the way to say it. I'll just remind them. I'll tell them. Meg said you should remember this to tell your grandchildren. This is the person who moved out of Florida before Hurricane Andrew and to Santa Cruz after the big 18 or 1989 earthquake. So, you know. <laughs> yep. I can be Pollyanna here. <laughs> so November 9th, next Wednesday. Uh, whoops, November 9th, next Wednesday, DevOps World will be presented in an online format. But it will, instead of a three-day event, it will be a four-hour event. Uh, it'll be done at two different times, one for Asia, one for Europe. I believe it's the same content both times. And there's no charge to attend. So you'll, you're welcome to attend there. Because they've had to collapse three days into four hours, Many of the talks that were accepted for Orlando could not be in the online event. That unfortunately includes the contributing to open source talk or it's op contributing to open source workshop. And what about Jake and Runshia's talk on plugin health scoring? As far as I know, plugin health scoring was also not included. Mm. Okay. I was looking for the agenda um, mm -hmm. on the website, but I was not able to find it. Yeah, and I, I, I haven't looked at the agenda, so I, it's a good question. So we'll have to, uh, I'll have to do some further asking around to see who, what the, the agenda topics are, et cetera. Do they cut out most of the technical? I bet they cut out the technical topics and kept yeah. the other. And I, I don't know which which topics they you know they they naturally had a very very hard decision how do you how do you collapse a face to face format into an online format and have it be successful and that that's a challenge I certainly one would not want to have to face. Yeah. Now, the the question then for us as a group is other ways we might present those talks. So Jenkins online meetups. Uh, for the talks was one idea uh, that, for instance, plug in health scoring would be a good thing to do in an online meetup. Have Jake and Roncha, and then we could even have Adrian and Diraj, potentially even you join for a conversation about what that would mean. Uh, the workshops mm -hmm. could be done in a slightly different format. Workshop could be could be a what would you call it? A must register, uh, registrations accepted for a small group of people, right? Right. Because really doing it online, it's complicated if we do try to do large groups. But a small group of people, we might have a, a potentially very successful experience there. Uh, I've just got to talk with my colleagues to see if, they're, if they can see a way to break loose the time to do it. And if, if you did that, is there any possibility you could record it, which would not be as good as being part of it, but 
Yeah, yeah, preserve it for others. Although there, I suspect the recordings of those kind of things, the ones that Darren and I did, are probably far superior uh, because it's just the two of us and working through exactly things. So right. the things that we're doing in that workshop are really just examples of what Darren and I did in the in the videos. Oh, okay, that are so no need, yeah. Yeah. So it would be live coding, live debugging with all those new contributors, right? Exactly. That that's the idea. There is the workshop experience that we had intended was live coding, live mm. debugging, uh, etc. And the challenge then is we don't want we don't want the risk of some random person coming in and disrupting by malicious zoom bombing. Uh, so we would have to use a registration system, uh, probably password protect, et cetera. And then we just go ahead. Yep. Um, and we don't have a date for Jenkins online meetup yet, right? No, no. These are just ideas. I've got to talk to, I've got to talk to the candidate presenters. I didn't want to risk disrupting the decision process for DevOps world. Hmm, exactly. And so telling, so asking someone, hey, would you like to present at an online meetup when they may be one of the selected speakers for DevOps world hmm. would be a really bad thing, right? That, that right. confuses things. So letting DevOps world get its, its work done and then extras, talks that weren't presented there, we can consider doing as an online meetup. Sure. And you said it would be shorter, right? As compared to previous ones. Right, right. Yeah, so online meetups can be as short or long as we want. Uh, certainly, I would never want an online meetup to go over two hours and most typically one hour or less. Mm. Okay, sure. Sounds good. Thanks. Great. Any other questions on DevOps world? Okay, then, then let's note next topic was releases. Weekly release was delivered this week and a new LTS. And Darren Pope and I did a, a live stream discussing it. It was actually about six or seven hours ago. But as it turns out, it was yesterday for the wall clock. So it's available there. That link takes you to the video. The video is available now. And it's about 50, about 30 minutes total. Pretty simple. Any questions on that one? Uh, small one. Yes. How does the weekly change log uh, <coughs> process happens right now? Because previously we were doing some edits. So how does it happen right now? Because I am completely out of touch. Yeah. So good question. So, what we've done is Kevin Martins now reviews reviews the weekly change log each Monday. And then he, Kevin, uh, proposes a second pull request that corrects the issues he finds. And then Mark applies those corrections on, on a good week, applies those corrections to the original pull requests so that the resulting resulting change log is ready to publish. And if changes are needed, then Kevin will submit, Kevin submits a, a change, a, a pull request to correct the issue. So the process we've been using, Diraj, is still working. We're just having Kevin do the, he's doing the reviews and sometimes I do the reviews. Okay, so by correcting the issues, you mean he tries to assign, no, rearrange the items and bullets, exactly, right? Exactly, the, the, common, the common problems there are things like, oh, somebody failed to put a hard stop at the end of the line. Oh, somebody put failed to classify the, the 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 pull request at all, and so it doesn't have a classification assigned, or they gave a really poorly phrased description or a poorly phrased uh, summary 
and so that has to be corrected. And he proposes all those as part of that corrective pull request. This corrective pull request is actually never applied. It's discarded, but it's a way for him to communicate, here are the changes that are needed. All right, that sounds great. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah, well, and, and, and certainly we welcome anybody who's available to help with it is welcome to. As it turns out, part of my desire to prepare Kevin to be a candidate for documentation officer was I wanted to be sure he knew how to do weekly change logs without me. And so while mm -hmm. I was on vacation, those two plus weeks, Kevin was doing weekly change logs and he did quite well. That's great. Yay. So I'll be also joining in every Monday. Try Good. To. And, and would love to have that because it, inevitably the more eyes we get on these change logs, the better they are and the happier everybody is. Yes. Okay, next. And this one may be of interest to Chris. The next LTS baseline has been selected as 2.375. It will release November 30th. Uh, Kevin and I will work on creating the LTS changelog. He's, he's going to create it himself as the first draft, and then he and I will review it. We may ask the others here in the docs office hours to review it as well, uh, but it's a good practice. He and I have been through LTS changelog prep at least three times previously, so it feels like he's, this is a good one for him to practice trying it on his own. So any questions? Oh, the reason I've said this might be interesting, Chris, you've been a release lead for previous long-term support releases. If you're interested in being a release lead again and the timing works, I suspect that Tim Jacome will put out the request saying, hey, who would like to be a release lead? Okay. And thank you again for your having acted as release lead. You're welcome. And this one will be just before the announcement of the new officers. I'm hoping that we'll persuade Tim to stay on as release officer. But, but if not, this would, would be the last release before his, the transition from Tim to the new, new uh, release lead or the new release officer. I have a question for Chris. So how was your experience uh, doing the releases for these change logs? Um, it depends because, because the first time was easy, but the second time it was kind of more challenging for me. But sometimes it's just communications too, because like back and forth, like I need some clarifications. Wait, well, the thing is that I'm making some instructions to change or crack some, some, some like commits I've made. But um, sometimes, like the communications may not be a hundred percent clear, and so um, that 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 could be an issue. Well, and I think sometimes the in some cases, the uh, release checklist, uh, sort of assumes expert knowledge. Yeah. Right. It it uses very short phrases, and and a, a brand new release lead like Chris was is left wondering, what does that sentence mean? <laughs> exactly. And, and, exactly. And the trick there is uh, when those cases, when we detect them, uh, we submit a pull request to fix it, right? But that meant poor Chris on occasion was left with, I wonder what they meant when they wrote that because it was <laughs> written almost halfway in, in secret code sometimes so there were when we were reviewing them as a group there were a lot of those mark that you said oh let me explain this because you'd sat through the meetings discussing it right not exactly. because you understood what they'd written yeah exactly yep and that's and that's that's the challenge of a checklist right checklists from from dr gawanda's checklist manifesto checklists are oftentimes focused on experts, practitioners. You know, when a pilot goes through a checklist, they use all sorts of shortcut words to describe things because rapid pass through the checklist is the thing. But in this case, it's also a teaching tool for new, new people who are working and therefore we need to get it, improve its, keep improving its phrasing. Right. Did that answer your question, Diraj? I know you'd asked it of, of Chris. Did, 
did Chris, did Chris's answer give you what you needed? Yes, absolutely. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Anything else on next LTS? Okay, next topic then. Hacktoberfest 2022. Okay, this one is a great story. So we've had over 100 first-time contrib contributions. Wow. Six, over 600 eligible pull requests, and over 500 of those were merged or flagged as approved because they were good enough. So 95 contributors, and of those 95, almost half qualified for the Hacktoberfest done criteria with just their contributions to Jenkins. That means they wow. made four contributions at least to the Jenkins project. So really, really a nice result. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. And Even I was surprised when I saw, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Diraj. Even I was surprised when I saw 531 PRs. That's a big, big number. Seriously. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. And, and, and now as a fun comparison, there were almost 1,200 um, non-automated PRs submitted during October, a 10 to 15 percent increase compared to previous preceding months. So there's been a real, real positive here, and the the, the anecdotal evidence indicates that the the spam rate was quite low, even better this year than last year. Mm, what do you mean by spam rate? Well, what, what happens is sometimes people decide that they'll submit a junk pull request to a project in hopes of it being easy and getting accepted. And what happened in years past was open source, con open source maintainers were quite frustrated by that because now they were wasting time processing people's silly or useless pull requests. And in this case, it, it didn't happen. We had maybe one in 10 or one in 20 pull requests were, were junk. And so very good. I think in all the time that I saw, I saw maybe two, and I suspect I processed as many as 100. So, so mm -hmm. very positive. So why do you think this time it was the, the spam rate was low? Oh, because we, we had a, a very serious threat. Uh, if, if you have two spam pull requests, if, if DigitalOcean detects that you had done two spam pull requests, you're rejected from the program. You cannot complete it successfully if, you, if, if, if two of your pull requests are flagged as spam. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, it, it's... And, it, mm -hmm, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, so... Uh, no, my topic is different. Please go ahead. Mm. That's, that's, I think that's really, well, the, there is, I guess there's another happy story here and we'll get into highlights in just a moment. But the, one of the happy stories for me is that, that contributing to open source tutorial that became improve a plugin, the one that we spent a year creating, right? It started mm -hmm. in Hectoberfest 2021 and then as Doc's office hours, we worked on it repeatedly. Diraj, you and, you and I started the thing and we worked it together and then Meg encouraged it and Kristen encouraged it. Uh, that thing finally turned out to be very, very successful for Hacktoberfest. We had at least four or five people who said, hey, thank you for that contributing guide. It was great. I was able to contribute, useful, I understood it, I've learned more things and and I think we had a real positive from that. And we've got now a good idea for Google Summer of Code next year based on the concepts in that tutorial. Cool. Oh, that's a very nice thing to mention because the biggest po point or something that shines in this story is the YouTube video, the live stream that you did with Darren. That was very, very helpful for the people who were following this tutorial. So big shout out for that live stream and those videos. And then thank you for those that document contributing to open source by mentioning everything in such a detailed way for any newcomer to learn. So I think 
it is due to those things that we were able to replicate the data and use those resources into the blog posts, which eventually helped those people. So that's yeah, so nice. And, and I think that's that was really really positive. I I, I liked. I like the results we got from Hacktoberfest 2022. We really, one was we avoided the mistake that we've made in the past of offering challenging repositories as part of the part of the Hacktoberfest. So, for example, I did not even offer the Git plugin or the Git client plugin because because they're just too challenging. There are just too many things that can go wrong with people trying to do pull requests there. So, and that worked out quite well because we had a bunch of plugins that were much easier to do and new contributors had a much higher probability of success. So good, good work. You know, Mark, in your copious free time, that would be a very interesting blog post from, it'd have to be from you, but to talk about, I think, I mean, all of the open source projects are having trouble. They have people who come in and are all excited about contributing and they fall off. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of it may be because A, we're putting out too complicated projects and B, we're not giving them enough information about how to do it. Exactly. And you could turn that into a general blog post that might help some of the other projects. That's Just inter saying. Yeah, interesting idea. Thanks, let me, let me make a note. Let's uh, consider a blog post on hints for success with new contributors. And, and they're not, none of them are, are bulletproof, none of them are flawless, but things like uh, uh, mentors available, right? Right. Uh, tasks that are valuable, but simple. Right. And, and yeah, those kind of things. So reference, reference materials available. Yes. Yes. That's a good one. Yes. Uh, reference materials available for, for use and maybe even multi-format reference materials. So mm. for those who written steps, um, video steps, et cetera, right? Because there are some people for whom the written steps may not be as, as readily approachable as watching a sc on screen where you see someone making specific changes in an IDE. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting on another project where I three times a day say, oh God, I wish Mark were here to manage this. That looking back, you know, but even back to the first, um, she codes Africa. We learned a lot there. Right. Well, and, and that's, said, go code. You know, you guys right. graduated college. Well, and and that's uh, that. Maybe that's the most important one of all: is keep making mistakes and keep learning from those mistakes. Right. Right, because she the she code Africa work was sort of sort of really bad on the first iterations. It's but we learned from the mistakes right. and, and sometimes the things we learned were uncomfortable, the, Oh, wow, we should not do that because it didn't work real well. Yeah. Right. Good. Super. All right. And I have a few more points. Yes. So mm -hmm. I noticed during this October month that there were a few people who messaged me personally trying to ask me, Hey, what should I do? How should I do things and contribute to Jenkins? So I, in them the same tutorial or and some general things as well and they can pick anything that works for them so then they picked out this tutorial they started following and made some pr and discussing everything so like one or two of them i need to confirm from them but what what i understood was the thing that they were having problem with is when they started contributing to uh, contributing the tests for that plugin so it, it they found it difficult to write the tests and how to do how to do it and i think j unit was not difficult for them but right using j unit to write tests for the plugin code was something that might have um, made it difficult for them to continue contributing so i need to confirm 
from from them and if that's the case i think it would be nice if i can or maybe anyone can write a blog post on testing plugins uh, with j unit or something like that yeah very well and that that is a that is a i would assume in the captain project meg sees the same kinds of things where there is an awful lot of specialized knowledge required to in order in order to successfully write a test but how does one acquire that knowledge is an excellent thing for a, a tutorial to say look we're going to learn together in this tutorial here's how you use your debugger here's how you watch mm. what's happening in this thing with your debugger because writing a test at least for me i write tests in the debugger I, I i spend a lot of time in the debugger being sure i understand i wrote this assertion did it work the way i expected etc mm -hmm. so yeah good good suggestion yeah well again i mean and mark's hammered years with mark testing is the great achilles heel right now mm -hmm. of of software everywhere but i think especially in open source um because it's a lot more fun to code than to write a test suite well and and actually a, a lot of tests many of them become liabilities over the long life of a project because now i have to maintain the test in addition to the code and i it requires thinking about both of them i like that thinking but but really it there isn't it's not free to have tests it's also right. expensive to not have them so but i see a lot of people going out and doing just the bare minimum test Mm -hmm. Right. You know, to not not thinking about everything that could fail and trying to test as much as you can, et cetera. Exactly. And uh, yeah. Diraj, are you doing testing now? Uh, to Jenkins or full time job? For your for your day job. Day job, yes, I'm doing testing. More on the UI automation, but it basically includes lots of things, uh, even OpenShift. So it's not regular testing that I was expecting. It's like more, yeah. more things are there. So it's pretty nice. You should use that and turn yourself into an industry name. You're young and smart and the mm. whole industry needs this stuff. And there isn't easy stuff out. There isn't accessible stuff out, right? Mark, Mark there's like big classes you can take. But, mm. uh, but if you like it and are interesting, you should think about that. You should be... In 10 years, you should be somebody that everybody goes, ooh, Diraj, you knew him when he was just starting out. Wow. <laughs> but what do you think that about the fact that there are lots of YouTube videos for different tutorials already available? Yeah, what at least I, I think what Meg's pointing you to is mm -hmm. the testing is at least as technically complicated a field as software creation because while software creation has to worry about all the things you want the software to do software testing also has to worry about how do we check that it's not doing the things it shouldn't there there's an software testing is a fascinating mm -hmm. domain yeah or wow. if somebody does something that they aren't supposed to, that it fails appropriately, there's right. that. Too. Exactly. All, so all sorts of fun and interesting things hiding in testing. Yeah. And, and a lot of technocrats tend to, I mean, for software coding, you have one little problem you have to solve. When you test, you have to put all that together, too. Right. Yep. So, yeah, you're good at this, Jiraj. Let's make you a name. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really nice suggestion. I'll think about it for sure. You can see the world. People will pay you vast sums to come and give them a seminar. Yeah, mm, that, that's the goal. <laughs> Traveling with the knowledge. Uh, All right. Anything else on Hacktoberfest 2022? <clears throat> yes, last thing. You were mentioning about... Uh, you, sorry, Chris, go ahead. So, no. Okay. So you were mentioning about when we were discussing about this plugin include the plugin tutorial you mentioned that you got some idea for the next uh, gsoc so can you tell me more tell us more briefly oh oh sure so the next one of the project ideas that was suggested for 2022 actually by basil crow was automate the so the gsoc idea was automate 
the uh, transformations that are documented in that tutorial. Uh, so, for instance, there are some easy ones. Upgrade the, the parent palm. There are some more challenging ones. Replace Joda time with Java classes. Replace HTTP client with in Java 11 with the native Java, those kinds of things. And, and there's this tool called Open Rewrite that looks like quite promising as a way to write these, basically what are transformations of code um, as an automation facility for it. And there's been at least one Jenkins contributor has done a few Open Rewrite changes like this. So that's, that was the idea. So that person automated uh, the updates or any replacing tasks for their plugin repository using Open Rewrite. Yeah, what they did was they had a specific problem they were trying, trying to solve. Uh, for instance, in this case, I think it was there were specific types of security issues where you shouldn't perform the following calls. It's unhealthy. And what what the submitter did was had an open rewrite rule that would read the source code and when it detected that flawed behavior, it would rewrite it and prepare and ship a pull request. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting problem because you can imagine rewriting source code is non-trivial, right? There's an awful lot of mm. t syntactical processing that you have to do to successfully transform source code. Exactly. So this gives an idea, sure. Uh -huh. so we can have a longer discussion later. So thanks Great. for that. Anything else on Hacktober Toberfest 2022 before we go to highlights? I want to get to highlights because we've got some cool things to show of Chris Stern's contributions and several others. Cool. Cool. Okay. So Chris, do you want to show them, or are you okay if I show them? What's your preference? You, you can show them. You can show them. Okay. So, um, first things first, we had in Doc's office hours, I think six or eight weeks ago, identified a non-trivial challenge that the developer documentation had no left-hand navigation that was anywhere near acceptable. What it had was a long list, and that was it. Whereas the left-hand bar on the user documentation had very nice expanding and contracting things that would show you exactly where you were and where, what you were doing in that section, which page you were reading. So we, we boldly, and I think it was now two months ago or more, wrote an issue report on Jenkins.io labeled it as Hacktoberfest, but not as a good first issue because we thought this is going to be a difficult one. And Chris picked it up as part of Hacktoberfest. And what we got is this. Notice the navigation on the left. Mm -hmm. And yes, in fact, it will expand and contract. So improve a plugin is now down here with its own navigation in it. Now, if I go back here to create a plugin, okay, navigation there, the how-to guides, reference architecture, reference topics, all of it living in this same kind of layout as we have with the user documentation. So watch this as I go to the user guide. Here's the same experience with the user guide. So, Chris, thank you very, very much. Marvelous. Yeah. I sincerely doubted anybody would be able to do this within the context of Hacktoberfest and you okay. did a brilliant job of it. So um, one you. more thing, go into one of the, one of them. Do we have the ability to link to a subsection now too? Or is that too much? When you say link to a subsection, what do you mean? Well, go into one of them. Okay. So here's persistent objects. Okay. And it's got the sections backward compatibility with Xtreme. Yes. And I'm looking at the URL. And Incompatible so I could link releases. to that. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Yay, yeah. yay. See, I don't care if anybody can read the damn things. I just want to be able to link to them. So. Shame on you. 
Shame I know. <laughs> what a coarse, crass attitude that is. Scribal, scribal problems. <laughs> yeah, if you so, go to one of the headings, do uh, you have a link for that as well? Yes. So uh, here's the heading, heading linked. Mm -hmm. And then we go inside the inside of it. Here's the sub, sub page. Hmm. So you, for, go, yeah, ahead. go ahead. So for this given page, if you want to, uh, you know, if you hover over the references heading, so is uh, this uh, on the right, uh, right side, right the side page, oh, references. Here. Yes. Above it, yeah, this heading. So uh -huh. does this heading has, okay. It does not have that link symbol, right? It does not. No. And, and in this case, I'm not sure that would help us. Oh, no, I take it back. It does. Have, you mean this link? Ooh, symbol. Nice. So yes, yes it does exactly. have that. Mm, that's awesome. Very nice. So yeah, Chris, Chris, go ahead. Sorry. When Chris took, took this task, I was like, wow, this is a big one. So I'm really glad that this was uh, completed. So thanks a lot for the work. Chris. Yeah. yeah, Chris, great work. Thank you. That's been a bugaboo for a long time. So, I didn't know. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Chris. Yes, I didn't know that. <laughs> it's good. I was able to compare it. Excellent. Thank you. So now, Chris, Chris went one step further. This next indicator, we had a problem in the system administration guide that what you'll see here is notice that let's look at it now and this is this is the, the the current look it stays nice we don't have a scroll bar at all because it's it's small enough that it doesn't need the scroll bar what we had previously was as though this release reverse proxy configuration was always expanded and users will have at most one of these reverse proxies and many of them will have none of them. So for them, it wasn't valuable for us to show reverse proxy squid or IIS. They may not be running on Windows at all. IIS is nonsense for them. So what Chris has done is he found a way to, and, and again, this was, we did this eight or 10 weeks ago, identified an issue, listed the issue in Jenkins.io, marked it for Hacktoberfest and did not mark it good first issue because it definitely was not a good first issue but chris has figured out a way to make it work and and the navigation is just as sweet as can be oh beautiful so notice that the scroll bar is only there while i'm inside reverse proxy configuration in all the other cases the scroll bar isn't needed so it doesn't show it gorgeous yeah, so Chris, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Welcome. Now we had we had other contributions. Tanuj had contributed new updated content for the Kubernetes install guide. The Kubernetes oh. install guide was first created as part of Docs, Google Season of Docs 2020. So it's two years out of date. And in the world of Kubernetes, two years is almost a lifetime. So great that, that Tanu, Tanuj did that change. Thanks very much. Then we got some cool artwork from, from uh, a person in Turkey. Yes, here is Jenkins in Turkey. Here's Jenkins for Georgia, the, the, the Georgia Republic. Oh, wow. And here is Nerd Jenkins. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Nerd Jenkins has no towel because nerds don't clean up after themselves. Is this is the implication. I am the I am the wrong person <laughs> to critique graphic materials. I am awe inspired by by what's been done here. Yeah. So I am too. I'm these are reminders beautiful. that there are many ways you can contribute to Hacktoberfest. Thanks very, very much to everyone who did. Exactly. My question on artwork is that how what what kind of tool do they use? Do you have any idea on that? I do not. Uh, that's one where I've it's that's a dark corner of the world because I have no <laughs> art skills whatsoever, and so I've never learned which tools they use or prefer. the The images are PNG, but I 
think they also have the facility to do them as scaled, scaled vector graphics as SVG. I see. Hey Mark, why don't we start using, we've got all these marvelous Jenkins that you can scroll and scroll on those. Why don't we start rotating them on the landing page? Good, good question. And we could even I, we we could even put a little dropout, you know, that this is what it is and who created it or something like that. Yeah. So one of the one of the suggestions had actually been to to rotate the stop the war image with other artwork images, right? And right, it's a, it's a valid it's a valid thought. the The images are certainly charming and fun, and yeah, uh, just no one's done it yet. It also gives an incentive for new people to contribute a new right. artwork as well because here it just lies there. Right. We'll put it in. If it's in the rotation, it's more more likely to be seen. Exactly. On the list, yeah. where's where's the um the the woman? I didn't see the woman on that list. Oh oh, you you, you just have when to. You, did I just miss it when you scrolled through them? You did. You just missed it because I saw it. It was there. Hang on. Let's keep going. There it is. Duchess France. There's Duchess France. Okay. Yeah, and and to go again, here is the SVG format. So this thing scales with no loss of image quality. Oh. And so. and very very nice that somebody did the work to use scalable ve vector graphics with it. All right, we've just about run out of time. Are there other topics we need to cover before we end for today? Fun meeting. Yeah, same. Lots of good topics and nice discussion. All right, well, so we will, recording of the meeting will be posted and the notes in the community forum. Thanks everybody for your, your efforts and have a great day. Okay, good week and we'll talk next week. <laughs>